Oh hi there, I'm Dark Shades and welcome to my channel. Um, the first time you're passing through, I you can subscribe, you can like, you can dislike, you can share and you can comment. Um, why I decided to raise the question, particularly about black people shying away from counselling, is because I have started this reggae counselling show and I'm not expecting people to be calling me up willy-nilly. But I do get texts, but for some reason, people are not calling. So I ask myself the question, I wonder why people are not calling? So I asked um, a couple of people, you know, just to get a feel of why people might not be calling the line when they obviously want advice and they obviously want to speak to someone. And someone said, um, oh, somebody might recognise my voice. So it then led me to think about, OK, is um, the fear or the embarrassment of accessing mental health services, even if they're free, like they are with Dark Shades on Afrobean Radio every Wednesday, 7 till 9. But yeah, even if they are free, is there something cultural about that? Then I started thinking about how we've been taught to deal with our problems, especially as black people. This could apply to white people, but I can only speak for black people. Um, but growing up, our kind of saviour was God. And if we went to church, we'd go to church and God became our counsellor. He was the person, or she was the person, um, who you would testify to, confess your sins, open up, cry, bal. You know, he he kind of, in essence, he's kind of like an invisible counsellor. You have counsellors who don't say anything, and by their non, um, by them not saying anything. It kind of forces the client to speak because most people don't like silence. So they fill in the gaps. They fill in the silence. So what would happen is, is that if you went to church and you're not thinking about God being your counsellor, but you do find that when you're praying and if you've done something wrong or if you feel guilty or if you want something to happen or if you're concerned about your past behaviour or you're concerned about anything that you've done, you do kind of beseech to God and you do tend to disclose and you keep disclosing and the more you disclose, the more you are putting it out there. And then you reach a point where you're just, oh, I feel so much better. So when you're thinking about counselling, it doesn't have to be a back and forth um, relationship unless you want it to be. Some people do not like counsellors that just sit there and go, hmm, OK, and how does that make you feel? Hmm. And why do you think that is? Hmm, I hear you. So what you're saying is, some people don't like those type of counsellors. Some people want counsellors to engage. So it all depends on the counsellor that is compatible with you and your condition or your experiences. All counsellors are different and they have different specialties. It's like going to a doctor. You have a doctor who specialises in the eyes, one that specialises in the ears, one specialises in the nose, the throat, the heart, your internal organs, your extremities. The same as it, that's the same thing with counsellors. You have counsellors that deal with different aspects of an individual's life. So if you've gone to a counsellor and you haven't got the result that you wanted or they've made you feel uncomfortable, or you have felt uncomfortable, maybe it's because you didn't go to a counsellor that specialised in your particular situation. Now, they do have, like, if it's something to do with your background and way, way back, you've got the psychodynamic counsellors. 
And so you wouldn't go to a CBT counsellor if your um, issues go way back to when you were a child. That's just an example. So when I'm thinking about black people now and why they might be wary of counsellors is that, number one, black people tend to have more pride than anyone else. They, they find it almost like acknowledging failure to admit that they want to go to a counsellor. Also, it's like they feel embarrassed. Um, and like I said, it doesn't mean that white people don't feel that way. I'm just talking about black people because the question came up about why do black people um, shy away from counselling? So um, let me just have a look at my notes. My um, notes, Okay. As black people, many of us, especially from the Caribbean, we're taught to keep our business to ourselves. Don't tell people your business. That was always a thing. And the thing is, is that in the Caribbean, their lives were built on lies. So many lies and secrets. So you don't even find them out until you're adults. And you kind of wonder why. But time changes. And there's obviously a reason. It's like when you go back to... 1930s and people had to hide the fact that they were pregnant at an early age and they had to send them off somewhere to some home and then have the baby and the baby would be raised by a nanny it's that kind of thing back in our day it was secrets and lies and so nobody knew your business nobody actually knew the truth they only knew the you that they were willing to show you so if they didn't show you who they really were, and a lot of them didn't, you didn't know what they were, what they were going through, or anything. And my mother always used to say, when I feel my worst, I look my best. So she was a typical Caribbean woman who would not bow or ask for help or allow herself to be seen as needing anything or asking for anything. She would do without and she would deal with the situations by herself. And so if you've grown up in that environment where your parents or your grandparents deem it an embarrassment to tell people what you're going through, what the family has gone through, what kind of um, upbringing you've had, that's a no-no. And of course, I'm the worst no-no ever because I broadcast everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> but my mother got used to me. She realised that I wasn't coming from a place of vindictiveness. It was just, a, I'm coming from a place of just learning and wanting to know the truth. Because once you know the truth about your past, it helps you to reconcile the present. But if you don't understand why things were the way they were, then you're always kind of blaming yourself for things that don't go right. And you kind of live a life of mistakes, not realising that it's because of um, irreconcilable differences or things you haven't been able to resolve from your past that you're carrying into the present and possibly the future if you don't get to grips with it. So um, people also don't want the mental illness label. Because once you have the mental illness label and it goes onto your record, it's kind of like, oh, you know, you can't get rid of it. And so that's another reason people see counselling as a mental issue. But the funny thing is, is that counselling, they don't report to anybody. It's not like they report to um, the NHS or any institutional body and say, oh, I've had A, B and C here. And yeah, she came or he came for counselling. They don't do that. So if you go to a counsellor, there's no label to it. Nobody knows that, uh, you know, that you've gone to see a counsellor. I think it's a bit different if you start having to take drugs. You go to your GP and you're taking Prozac or something or Valium. Now that's totally different because they would have to, they would have to put that on your record. But counsellors, they're not, they don't, it's totally a confidential relationship between the client and the counsellor. 
And the only time that you um, betray that confidence is if that client is about to kill somebody, about to kill themselves or about to kill you. So if they're about to kill you, you probably... <laughs> You probably don't live to tell the tale, but that's the only time you make a disclosure. Other than that, it's strictly confidential between you and the counsellor. Now, when um, when people kind of think about counselling, it does have a stigma attached to it for some people. In America, the stigma is decreasing to such an extent. I think at the last count, I think 2012, over half of the American population were receiving therapy. A lot of times, the only thing that stops people from receiving therapy or counselling is the money. Or in America, the insurance, because it makes their insurance premiums go up. But, I mean, apart from that, and so when you, if you do need support or advice, take advantage of the free counselling. You know, like on the show that I do, Dark Shades Counselling. It's every Wednesday, 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. You can call up on 07309-853-369. And you can ask a question and I'll do my best to respond. It's not going to be like you'd go into a counselling session and you have like um, 50 minutes or whatever it is they give you for 30 quid, but you will get something back from it, hopefully. And like I said, I'm, I, I do use a toolbox uh, approach, which, does, which kind of covers a lot of different strategies, but I'm very kind of, I call myself friends with boundaries because I'm very, it's just like I'm talking to you now. You know, I'm, I'm not like a traditional counsellor but I do get good results. And that's the most important thing. People do things differently, but as long as you get good results, that's the most important thing. So pride can stop, um, like I said, pride in particular can stop black people from seeking um, counselling. Um, and they kind of say, oh, I can I can start to talk by myself. I don't need no help. You know, I don't say, oh, I'm strange, I can help me, me talk my business, what she can do, what he can do. And some people are so sceptical and wary, you know, just money they want, you know. And for them, even like 50 minutes and it's 30 quid or whatever it is that people charge, some people charge up to 50 quid. But whatever it is, you know, they don't see the value in investing that money in themselves. They just think, what is the point of me talking to somebody who don't know me, you know? And that's how they think. But it's the process of, it's a very subtle process, but it's the process of disclosure. Disclosing parts of you you've never been able to disclose. You're afraid to disclose to people you know. And so you're in the safety of someone who doesn't know you, who will not judge you and can offer you a piece of advice or help you at least see why it is you're feeling the way you do and how to turn things around. That's the main reason. It's not anything sinister. So, um, so yeah, most people, they won't go because it's like admitting failure. It's admitting that they can't cope. People don't want to admit that they can't cope. So they keep trying to cope. But sometimes you need an outlet. And I'm not even saying you need to go to a counsellor, but you need to do something. You need to speak to someone. Write it down, record what you're going through, get it out of your system. That's the most important thing. Um, so, yeah, so people don't call my show, um, you know, from what I gather, is that they're afraid that someone might recognise their voice. They're afraid that they're going to be judged. They find it embarrassing and they want to portray a picture of perfection. Most people don't want you to know that they've got problems either with themselves or with their marriage or with their partners. They portray a perfect image, a perfect family image. And at home, they're crumbling and they don't know what to do. And so they do want to reach out, but they're so terrified that somebody will know that their perfect image is not so perfect. 
The irony is, is that that's everybody. Everybody. Everybody has the same fear. I don't know if you've been to a training uh, where you haven't understood something, like say an acronym or a phrase. You know, some places you go, they're always using these like ACEs, A-C-E, and you're thinking there, what does that mean? And oh God, I'm not going to ask. I'm too embarrassed to ask. I should know this. And a lot of people sit there and they don't say anything. And then you think, they keep saying it so many times that I have put my hand up and said, look, what does ACEs mean? Can you explain it, please? And then they'll say, oh, I'm ever so sorry. You know, it's my profession. I tend to use acronyms. It's adverse childhood experiences. Then you hear everybody go, ah, oh, I was going to ask, but I felt embarrassed. I didn't know. I, w- I, I didn't want to ask because I thought that, you know, it was something I should know. And you'll find that 75% of people in that room wanted to ask the question, but were afraid to ask the question or embarrassed, not afraid, just embarrassed. And so that is a bit like counselling. Everybody assumes everybody's life is perfect. Everybody's living a lovely life. And no, there's no cracks or anything in it. Yes, there's the minor little conflicts, but nobody kind of wants anyone to know that they are going through a struggle. And so they don't want to call, they don't want to go to a counsellor because it's admitting openly that I have a problem. But, so does everybody else. It's just that some people are more vocal than others. And when you hear people are vocal, you kind of um, look at them in awe and you think, blimey, I wish I could be like that. But you can. This is about you. This is about you as an individual trying to heal yourself, trying to get things sorted, trying not to worry so much about things. And trying to, you know, have somebody spin a different take on it. You know, look at it from a different angle, a different perspective. That's what that's about. So, um, some people just don't have the money. But like I say, take advantage of either reduced um, reduced services, like at communities, centres, charities, colleges. They do have different types of um, reduced services. And like I said, call my show. Um, 07309 853 Anyway, is it cultural? It's not only black people, but like I said, because we are renowned for this pride thing and, you know, don't talk our business and embarrassment and all of those kind of stigmas, you know, we are more likely to be reluctant to access um, therapy. But like I said, in America, it's like the norm. You know, as long as you can afford it, everybody, oh, I'm going to go and see my therapist today. It's like, it's like a part of their day. But normally, when you watch these Hollywood wives or whatever they are, they're always going to see their therapist. But there again, they're well off. And they just see it as a day out. Yeah, and so it's about changing your viewpoint on how you actually view therapy or counselling. It's about changing that negative image and um, making it a bit more positive. So, um, big in America, I think we were church, I think we said the church thing. Now, some people would rather talk to their friends about their issues. And that's fine, uh, providing it depends on what extent you're going, what is going on. Sometimes um, friends are not equipped to carry the load of anything too traumatic. And then you might find that you're transferring your trauma onto them and they don't have the ability to cope. I remember I used to do that. Oh, I was terrible. I was always talking my business, but I've always been that way. I've always kind of offloaded, but I never realised that I was actually putting it, putting it on, on onto other people. But I think that is what how I managed to heal. I heal through my poetry. I mean, my whole life is in poetry. I've actually got a poetry book called My Life is Poetry. That was my therapy. And yeah, it's 
it's out there. You can look it up. You can actually, um, I think on issue, um, you can read it for free. You download it for a price, but you can actually read it for free. It's called My Life is Poetry. So, yeah, I, that is how I got through my situations and my um, the things that happened to me growing up. Um, what else is there? Some issues, yeah, because some issues need professional help, as I said. Because if you offload to someone who's not equipped to carry it, they can actually get depressed and they may not be able to carry it and they might end up doing all sorts. So in if there is something traumatic that's happened, it is best to see a professional. Or, like I said, you always you can always write it down, you can always record it. You can pretend that there's, they have this thing called gestalt therapy. You can pretend that there's somebody sitting in a chair and you give it what for. You can even pretend it's your friend sitting in a chair and tell her everything that you want to tell her, even though she's not there. But the actual process of getting it out is sometimes enough. So you don't want to transfer your guilt and you don't want to transfer your pain. So um, some of the reasons why people don't access therapy is they can't afford it. They can't afford to invest in themselves. They don't have the time. They don't think the counselling session is worth the amount of money that they pay for it. Um, there are bad counsellors which give all counsellors a reputation. And, but that's usually because the client has accessed the wrong type of counsellor. Really, um, counsellors should be saying to you, what is your issue? And if you tell them what it is, they should be able to signpost you to a specialist. That's how it should go. But you can go on the counselling website, BACP. That's the British Association of Counselling Therapists. You should be able to go on there and you'll find the specialties. Just put B for Bertie, A for Apple, C for, say, counselling, and P say that's for psychotherapist so yes yeah, so if you go onto their websites they'll be able to let you know the specialties of all the different counsellors and you're going to be surprised how many there are so you just make sure that you go to the right one um some people wonder what talking is going to do sometimes it's hard to build up trust with your counsellor it takes a while so that's why, you know, you need at least six weeks with a counsellor and then you just build it up and then you get to trust that counsellor and you feel more open and you can be more honest. It's not a quick fix. Um, yes, it's, diff it's difficult to talk to people about difficult topics. Um, it feels uncomfortable sometimes talking to a stranger about your personal stuff. Um, some people have a theory that therapists just sit there and judge them. They don't. They're usually trying to work out the root of your concern. Um, some people take medication or Prozac rather than going to a counsellor. Some people take drink and use that as escapism or drugs, gambling, um, emotional shopping, anything to distract them. Some people work themselves to death to discourage, you know, to distract themselves from the actual issue. Um, some people just don't want to air their dirty laundry in public, but it's not in public. Remember, you're in the confines of a room where there's only two people. And then you, now you've got online counselling, it makes it even easier. So, yes, yeah, so it's not about airing your dirty laundry in public. What you say between yourself and the counsellor stays there and it doesn't leave. And it's confidential, it's protected by law. And like I said, as long as you're not going to do something dangerous, like go and, you know, blow up the Houses of Parliament or something, it's absolutely fine. So if you're going through a stressful time, unhappy, anxious, don't talk to your, don't talk yourself out of taking care of yourself. It's really important. So if pride is holding you back from seeking advice, listen to your negative self-talk. Give yourself permission to look after your needs. Accept that you feel vulnerable, weak, flawed, you're embarrassed, you feel shame. But reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out anyway. Don't be worried about what other people think.
think because that is the biggest hindrance people worrying what people think nobody cares not really many people have been told to pick themselves up stiff upper lip pick up by the bootstrap so that's not just black people it's it's all a lot of people who grow up in a certain culture so they're forced to deal with their mental and emotional issues on their own or use escapism like i said the drugs alcohol the emotional shopping and gambling and stuff you'd be surprised how many people feel the same way you do how many people have issues and with this covid19 i think even more people people have more in common that they than they ever did before COVID came into our arena. So um, therapy doesn't have to be expensive. Like I said, take advantage of free services. Um, keep a journal of your mood swings and your worries and concerns. That doesn't cost you anything, but it still helps you get it out of your system. Use the um, recorder. You can record and talk to that. Um, some people, like I said, they go to church, but I'm not quite sure what's happening in the churches these days. So even that helps, actually, the praying and the testimonies and getting it out to the Almighty, that helps. It relinquishes, it, it, it relinquishes, it relinquishes you of all of those um, dormant pain and everything because people somehow, when they're speaking to God, whether it's in the home or in the church, they just let loose. You hear people barling, throwing themselves on the floor, all sorts. They get it out. And that's what it's about, getting it out, recognising what is worrying you, what you're trying to keep down, what you're trying to deny and suppress and bringing it to the surface and getting it out. And whether, like I said, you do it through prayer, whether you go through a counsellor, whether you do it journaling, whether you do the gestalt therapy, talking to an imaginary person, it doesn't matter as long as it does the job. So it doesn't have to cost you thousands and thousands of pounds or hundreds of pounds. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to stop it there. And that's all for now. Bye bye.